Deep learning is having tremendous applications in our everyday life. It is spanning several industries and disrupting all major global businesses. A non-exhaustive list of these major applications includes image classification, email classification, e-commerce, online search, online video recommendations, and social media such as advertising, auto-tagging, video and image capture. The applications of deep learning are vital for more serious industries including medical imaging and disease diagnostics. In finance, for example, activities like stock trading, portfolio management, risk and credit analysis all rely on deep learning. Speech recognition and smart grammar correctors are part of our daily activities. Autonomous and self-driving cars that are able to recognize road signs, pedestrians, low or busy traffic, and navigating between lanes. Last but not least, deep learning achieves superhuman level in complex games such as board games like chess and go, and video games where machines are using deep learning algorithms to outperform world-class champions in all sorts of categories. At the heart of deep learning lays the concept of classification. In layman terms, classification is a procedure to separate data into different classes based on their distinguished characteristics. From the previous applications of deep learning we have shown, we can really boil down most of the major applications of deep learning to a classification problem. In image classification, for instance, we may encounter a classification problem to distinguish between cat versus dog pictures. Face recognition involves classifying faces based on their emotions, such as happy versus sad faces. In self-driving vehicles, one of the tasks will be, for example, to watch for the presence or no of pedestrians in the lane. Also, in medical imaging, one of the most obvious applications is recognizing and classifying tumors as benign or malignant. Another example is online shopping and recommender systems. We can classify items as interesting or not for users based on their previous purchases. Thus, in the context of deep learning, classification is the act of creating precise borders between data clusters based on their different classes. An analogy can be made with geography, where borders separate different countries. These borders can be viewed as different classes in the dataset. In this case, the dataset is a map. Classes are separated due to their different characteristics. In the case of countries, these characteristics are likely to be related to culture, language, history, ethnicity, and so on. The best way to learn about classification is to show an example that illustrates a certain problem. Let us say, within the past year, we have gathered data for newly built houses in a city called Rockville. The following table shows us information about the new built houses. The first column shows the price of the houses in multiples of 100k US dollars. The second column shows the location of the houses from the city center in kilometers. The third column tells us if a given house was sold or not within a year from its construction. Equipped with this data, a real estate agent working on the housing market of Rockville called Jane, wants to know the following. Given its price and location, how likely a new built house is to be sold within a year? Why does Jane want to know that? Because if she does have this information, Jane can use it to better refine her marketing and sales strategies. So what does Jane do? She draws the data from the previous table of last year showing the newly built houses. 
She plots the data using the house prices for one axis and the distance from the city center for the other axis. Then she labels the sold and unsold houses with blue and red dots respectively. At this stage, Jane observes that she is able to draw a straight line separating the two data clusters representing sold and unsold houses. Seeing that the data is split into two clusters, Jane concludes that data points below the line represent houses that are likely to be sold within a year after they are built. At the same time, the data points above the line represent houses that are not likely to be sold within a year after they are built. From this basic analysis, Jane concludes the following for her market study. New built houses that are close to the city center and relatively underpriced will sell faster compared to houses far from the city center and relatively expensive. The example of the housing market in Rockville is known as two-dimensional binary classification. In binary classification, data are separated into two distinct classes. The dimensions of the data is based on the number of input known to us. Again, in the housing market example, we had two inputs, namely the prices of the houses and their locations. These two data classes are well separated by a straight line. Thus, this example of binary classification is linear in nature. However, we can have more than two inputs. For example, we could have had the number of rooms as an additional input to the price and location of each house. In this case, the data are represented as 3D shapes. In the case of the housing market example, the three axes of the graph will represent the price, the location, and the number of rooms. The separation between the two classes in the data is no longer a straight line, but rather a 2D plane. Besides binary classification with linear borders, nonlinear borders separating the different classes are also a possibility. These two graphical representations show a situation like this. An S-shaped curve separates the two classes in the left side graph, while a circular border lies in between the two classes in the right side graph. Binary classification, linear or nonlinear, is the most basic form of classification problems. When dealing with classes in datasets, there can be way more than two types of classes in the data we are dealing with. Instead of outcomes such as sold and sold houses, one can think of classification problems involving more than two outcomes, such as labeling animals in pictures. Do we see a cat, a dog, a hamster, or a fox? If we assume a 2D classification problem still, the different classes in our dataset can be represented as the following graph. One can note a rich structure with highly nonlinear boundaries separating the many different classes. In reality, classifications in deep learning is way more complex than the presented examples. Datasets are rarely two or three columns, rather in the hundreds or even thousands of columns. As such, Data classes can live in much higher dimensions, with highly nonlinear boundaries. Thus, the true essence of deep learning is to build algorithms specifically designed to find the best borders possible between these classes for big datasets. Now, the billion dollars question, how do we find these borders? This is exactly what we will show in this series of videos about the fundamentals of deep learning. So stay tuned for the upcoming videos.